Topic of today's video, selling a slot car set to Walmart. Nope, has nothing to do with what you see here. <laughs> Everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about something that I saw yesterday at Walmart and it pretty much, uh, <laughs> it kind of surprised me, but it um, maybe reminded me of something that happened last year. So uh, I'm going to put up a picture now of the, uh, the new set that's available at Walmart, slot car set by Dragon Eye. Um, it's the Fast and the Furious set, as you can see. And it's made by, if you actually look on the back, and I'll show the picture I took of the back where you can see the manufacturer. It's made by a company called Dragon Eye. Well, who are Dragon Eye? They are a manufacturer in China that would make something that we might call here kind of a generic set for somebody. For a slot car company or a major retailer that would go to them and say, hey, I want a road race set. I want to pay this much money for it. Uh, make me something that's, you know, a slot car set or like a gravity set, like a Hot Wheels set or a pullback set, that sort of thing. And a company like Dragon Eye would make that for them at a very low cost and you'd be able to sell it under your own name and uh, you'd make a fair amount of money the, the, because you'd be able to really mark it up. The problem with a set like this is that the quality of this is going to be really fairly low. Um, Dragon Eye is actually the manufacturer of this. What do I mean by that? I'm not talking about the brand that someone's using to sell slot cars. Like the, the home set companies that we're familiar with, they are the manufacturer, but they're not actually the factory that produces the set or the cars. The factories themselves, in this case Dragon Eye, uh, produce the cars or the sets. In the cases of the home set folks that we're familiar with, they actually have those cars produced sometimes in the same factory in uh, pretty much Shenzhen, China. There and there's only a few factories uh, that produce pretty much all of the world's slot cars. Now, whether you believe me or not, this is the case. Most slot cars, whether they say they're, you know, made in Spain or made in Italy or made in England, uh, a lot of the parts that are sourced, at least, are actually made in China. Now, I'm not saying all these brands, and I'm not saying there's, like, lies going on here, but we need to be honest about this, and most of the time... This stuff is made in China, and it's going to be assembled somewhere else. Or it's going to be made in China, and it's going to have another brand name put on the box. In this case, Walmart is selling a Fast and the Furious set. It just, it just says Fast and the Furious on it. It is actually made by the company Dragon Eye directly for them. The retail on this set is $39. What does that mean in terms of set costs? Set costs were probably somewhere around uh, 18 maybe $20 sold to Walmart, FOB, Hong Kong. They would have bought the goods directly in Hong Kong. They would have shipped them to their own distribution centers in time for, hey, we're in Christmas season. It's just how this works, folks. Christmas starts around September-ish. That's when everyone wants their goods at the very latest for Christmas sales. So they're all going to have all the goods for the big holiday time of year to sell by, I mean, September at the latest, because it needs to be at their, you know, distribution centers across the world, pretty much, for Christmas, for Hanukkah, for whatever at the end of the year. That's just kind of how the, the retail business works, um, especially at the mass market level. So if Dragon Eye could sell them a set that they made with a license for probably about $18, maybe $19, maybe $20. 20 is a little high, though. Although this is a licensed set. The entertainment license on there 
it does cost something extra to have that on there and not have just a generic set. Just a plain old generic set may cost you a couple dollars per set less, maybe a dollar or two less, uh, which really adds up really quickly. But an entertainment license like Ghostbusters, for example, like Mario, like uh, Fast and the Furious, like Batman, like Cars, Disney Cars, all of this stuff adds incremental cost on top of the cost just to produce the set. So that's the one thing that you got to consider. It makes a set way more desirable. So coming back to this specific set, how do I know so much about this kind of set <laughs> and maybe where it kind of came from? Because when I worked for Hornby, US Hornby, we, uh, last fall, we were at the Dallas Toy Fair and the buyer for Walmart came by and we tried to sell him on this set which you'll see being dropped in now. It's a Batman battery-operated set. Now, this is a mock-up of a box that uh, they had worked out to sell at the Dallas Toy Fair. Now, this set would have been just... It would have been shown with a number of other set box fronts. We call them planograms. Well, at least here in the U.S. we do. And the box fronts usually are all you would have for a show, an early show like Dallas. Dallas Toy Fair, which, except for this year, happens every year in October, is really the first trade show of the year for the toy business. And uh, I had gone there the last couple of years in a row for Hornby. I never went there for Carrera. And uh, so the sales manager, myself, uh, someone usually from the UK would come, and then the, the GM of the company of uh, Hornby US would come and we would pitch. Well, they would really do it. I, I was there to set the booth up. I helped design the booth. I helped uh, pick all the products we'd show. And um, that was my kind of job to do that. And I would be there to answer questions, especially, especially technical questions maybe. But, you know, my main role there was not to sell the buyers from the mass market because this was a closed trade show. This was only mass market buyers. This was your targets of the world, Toys R Us, if they were still around, which they kind of are. Um, Walmart, uh, Hobby Lobby, uh, Hobby Towns would, would maybe come there. Uh, not your mom and pop stores. This would be your big national chains. And chains from around the world. So we showed them the Batman set. Or at least the idea for it. Uh, the buyer, and I'm going to look at my notes here. I still have some of the notes, or I still do have the notes from the show last year. I don't know why I kept them. Um, his main concerns were not about the... not. He liked the idea of the set. His main concerns, like all their concerns in the mass market, are how much is he going to pay for it? What's the entertainment license he's going to get on it? And when can he have it? Those are the only concerns. He doesn't really care about scale. Sorry to break it to you guys. They don't give a damn about scale. They care about cost. Cost means you're going to have the lowest priced item you possibly can. What does that mean? That means you put the smallest possible products in a box that you possibly can. What does that mean? HO, 143rd. 132nd is entirely out of the question. That does not work in the U.S. market. Anyone that thinks that you can sell 132 to the mass market is delusional. They have no concept of what buyers here will accept. This is a fact. So, he would have sold that set. Drag and I would have sold that set to them for maybe, like I said, maybe uh, $18. For a company that would just light, that would just manufacture or just have a set produced for them, the cost of that set might only be you know, 10 to $12. The other way you, you do it is, you know, you have a higher quality enough product, a high quality enough product that by the end of the year, when you get charged back for the RDG, the return damaged goods, you factored in extra cost, a few cents for each set, a, maybe a dollar for each set, although I kind of doubt you could get that much into it. Um, how much you could actually get into a set uh, you, you inflate it a little bit, so then when they come back to you at the end of the year, after the holidays, you know, 
February, March, uh, then they say, well, you know, we had this many returns, you got to pay us this amount back, or we paid this amount in marketing to market your set, we want this amount back. Then you balance that out and you see if you made money on it. If you made money on it, then your business made money. Because there were three sets basically in the running to this buyer from Walmart, who actually, from what I heard, is now gone from the company. Heard that this morning. A little bit of interesting information there. Um, so there were three sets. There was this Dragon Eye set. There was a Carrera special Mario set that would have only been sold to Walmart. And there was the idea of the Batman set. Now, we probably would have changed the, the layout of the set. We might have done exclusive packaging. We might have done exclusive cars within very strict confines because the licensee uh, or the licensor, whatever, uh, we would have been really limited in what we could do with the box art by the movie company, by with the cars for the, by the movie company. It's very, 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 all of this is very, very tight walls that you work within when you're talking about entertainment license slot car sets or any kind of product like that. So you can't just make anything you please. It's essentially made to the specs of the movie companies or whoever you're licensing the products from. That's just the way it is. In a lot of cases, they tell you what they want you to make. You then try to sell it to a, a, a mass marketer. And in off, a lot of the time, the mass market buyer will come back and say, well, I want this, but I want an exclusive. I want to buy all of the product that you can make of this topic or this specific set. Or I want you to rework something. Or, you know, like I said, a special car, or you add in a car, or you add in a track piece or two. Something that they get that's different from some other retailer, what they might get. Those are kind of the walls, like I say, that you work within if you're working on a mass market product. So it's a really, it's a, it's a tightrope that you're walking. Trying to please them, trying to make some kind of profit trying not to harm, <laughs> frankly, the retailers that, you, that you're already selling to in various markets. And absolutely that is a consideration. Despite what retailers might think, I mean, you really have to be careful in what you offer the mass, what you offer the hobby, and the specialty toy. Each year there are movies that come out that kind of dictate what the kind of hot toys are going to be for the year. And this year... There wasn't really too much coming out that everyone knew about. This was obviously ahead of the pandemic. There was a Batman movie planned. There was the Fast and the Furious uh, cartoon that was planned. So there wasn't really a lot of good uh, licensing opportunities, especially as far as this buyer was uh, seeing. So the thing he really talked about, and he brought it up, was Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters was a thing he asked several times about, and I have it in my notes from, from the meeting. He asked us several times, well, have you thought about a Ghostbusters set? Have you thought about the Ghostbusters license? Because it's one of these licenses in the toy business that really hasn't been done to death. Um, we all know which ones they are. You go to Walmart, you go to Target, you can see in the toy aisles which licenses have been done to death. You know, the, the huge sections, the planograms built in Walmart and built in Target where they have like a store within a store where it's a, a theme for each brand, each movie. That's really how products are developed is they have slots to fill uh, that they only really want to buy products for. If you have a product that falls outside of those planograms that they set up, those designs that they have set up for their whole section in the stores you're probably not going to sell those products to them. That's just a fact. They, they design this stuff for an experience for the, the consumers that walk through. And um, if it doesn't fit, you know, they're not going to buy it. So that's just, that's kind of a hard reality. This was a 143rd scale set that's, uh, that Dragon Eye is making with the Fast and the Furious. We had suggested, and it's a battery operated set. Uh, as you can see from the box art, we had suggested a, uh, a Skeletric Micro set, which is essentially HO, what we would call, you know, 64th, 87th scale. In the U.S., you just kind of call that all kind of HO, despite what some folks think. It's, you know, that smallest scale that you can make for slot cars 
and the 143rd stuff is kind of considered a big scale for mass market. So I think that, you know, Drag and I probably sold Walmart on the idea of this being, you know, kind of a larger scale set rather than a smaller scale sort of an HO set. The problem with selling a 143rd scale battery operated set is the cars are really fairly heavy. What does that mean? That means you're not going to get a long running time out of the batteries that are in there. There are AA batteries in this set. That's what a lot of people have gone to, a lot of manufacturers have gone to for their battery operated sets. They've gone from C or D cells down to AA's because AA's, you know, they'll, they'll fit better. The box, the uh, track box, power box will fit better in a, you know, flatter master pack box, in a set box, than a larger battery box would. So they've gone to these smaller cells. And so the Scalextric uh, uh, performance is really good. You have really, really pretty quick cars. I mean, this is battery app we're talking about, so you got to... You know, you gotta you gotta temper what you're thinking about here, as opposed to some kind of you know performance version of a, of an HO a hobbyist kind of a grade slot car. But the performance is excellent. It really is. Cars are fast. They stay on the track. Of course, there's magnets. the The bodies look really nice. The bodies are incredibly lightweight on these on the micro cars. They're all interchangeable with a the standard chassis. So I mean, it's as far as an entry level product especially for the mass market. It's an excellent product line. It really is. When you get this 143rd scale idea, it's not really going to work because these cars are going to, the, the runtime of the cars is going to be pretty low, especially when you consider, you know, for the scale extra, micro scale extra, five, six hours uh, for, for a set of batteries, you know, definitely five hours, probably maybe even six um, on a set of batteries of, of good running on the on that power and for 143rd scale i mean you'd be lucky to get two hours of running time uh yes i haven't i don't own the set i'm not gonna buy it for 40 dollars um but it's you know i mean we all know you guys are slot car guys if you're watching this or slot car fans if you're watching this you know that a 43rd scale car is heavier than an ho scale car a teeny tiny little car we know this there's no argument to be made here the 43rd scale stuff, it's going to run a lot slower. It just is, especially more quickly as the power runs out. So the product that the consumers are actually buying, and it's just a, you know, a figure eight set, basically, uh, quality is going to be really bad. They're going to have a lot of returns of this item. And I'm sure the, the wires for the, for the track connections are going to be questionable <laughs> and the, the quality of the controllers i'm sure is questionable i think the track is probably fine yes of course it's going to be incompatible probably with anything else on the market because it's going to be dragon eyes proprietary track connection system because they're the actual manufacturer in china uh probably shenzhen but i can't remember so when i saw this set i thought to myself holy crap if we would have sold that Skelextric set, what would that have meant? <laughs> would that have meant I still had my job? Possibly. We would have gotten at least several hundred thousand dollars worth of sale out of, uh, you know, several containers sold to Walmart because uh, they're buying the stuff by the pound, not by the, by the piece. You know, they would buy the stuff by the container, plural, and uh, ship to the, to the U.S., you're going to get at least of an HO set or a small set. You're going to get at least uh, probably 1,200, I mean, at least 1,000 sets, probably between 12 to 1,400 of a battery-operated set in one container, in one 40-foot high boy. Uh, and just by comparison of a 132 set, an average analog 132 set, just by comparison, you'd probably get maybe 800 750, 700 uh, sets in a in a, a container of of uh, the same size. Uh, so you know they they would have made we would have made you know probably a few hundred thousand dollars from that set if it would have been an uh, a set that they would have gone nationwide with 
on a you know a real on a big nationwide program with all of their stores. I mean, it could have been a couple million bucks. So I don't know. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, whatever. It's done now. And uh, thanks for watching this video. I just figured I'd uh, kind of continue the uh, licensing discussion because I had this very specific example that I have some direct connection with uh, indirectly <laughs> because, well, you saw why. So uh, I appreciate you all watching this video. I appreciate all the likes, all the subs. It's uh, It really means a lot to me. And uh, stay tuned for the next video coming soon.